What's up, everybody? Welcome to the First Class Podcast, where we talk about Bitcoin, crypto, NFTs, and Web3, everything you need to navigate this fast-moving industry. I'm Canucks, and I'm here with my boy JB. And JB, tell us who we're talking to today. We have a jam-packed episode with defense attorney Carlos Garcia. We're talking securities. We're talking his service in the Army. Tips for people entering the NFT crypto space, and especially those who are looking to build a project. You're not going to want to miss this. Yeah. And we talked about the reasons why it's so much gray area right now. We also talked about a ton of things from KYC to other deeds to uh, being anon versus having accountability for everything that goes on online. We talked about being careful versus being educated. Major gems in this one. Carlos overall, I thought he was solid, dude. Felt like I knew him after we finished talking. We actually talked for like another hour and a half. So definitely someone to tune into tap into make sure wherever you're listening to this one you hit subscribe you rate review leave a comment and stick around to the end but without further ado here's our conversation with carlos carlos it's uh cinco de mayo how are you how are you doing today it's it's cinco de mayo and i am here in the borderland el paso man so it's uh it's a good place to be for cinco de mayo but we're we're doing great man we're doing great how are you guys doing I'm great. I would say uh, we should take a shot, but it's not that kind of t- uh, kind of show. So got the you know, we have to do without it. Water, we got coffee. We got the coffee. <laughs> Stay amped up. Cheers, man. That's awesome. I appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on here and joining us. I do have to say, for those of you who are listening and not watching, you're missing the duds. Like my man pulled up, flexed on us with the clean studio, the professional mic. He even got the um. I do this for a living mug too. So it's amazing. I, I got to give you kudos for the setup. This, uh, this actually isn't even a real iPad. It's a, it's a prop. <laughs> Just kidding. That's funny. You know, that, that's we we awesome. got to keep it. Hey, we got to stay under budget here. Okay. We, we go all out on everything else. But we, you it, know. it is a bear market right now. I don't blame <laughs> there, it, You're not, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. That's probably a good thing to talk about tonight too, because first of all, I love what you guys are doing, man, because uh, Juwan, we were talking earlier and educating just people in general uh, is important, but more specifically, I think we we're in, in, we're in an industry where, um, you know, a lot of people that never really had resources now have a lot of resources. So it becomes more important and to, to just talk about things like, uh, you know, you got to pay your taxes or maybe this is a security or there's like intellectual property laws that you have to abide by and that sort of thing. And I know sometimes it feels kind of stuffy when we talk about that because they're like, man, all right. Killing the vibes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, I'll try to make it entertaining, but you know, just come with me on this journey and and let's learn a little bit. And then you can make your own decision. Cause I I think that's the one thing, like if, if people have the information to make the decision, whatever decision it is they make, well, you know, that's that. So, so the best we can do is sort of get out there ahead of it. Yeah. You're the only guy on Twitter who can say this is financial advice and the advice is pay your damn taxes. <laughs> That's, you know, what's funny. Literally like five minutes before I hopped into here, I got off of a Twitter spaces. There's like a, a, a group of lawyers that's really, uh, really dedicated. And if I, if I could just take a quick second to, uh, to give a quick shout out to all the lawyers out there that are learning uh, the space that, you know, it's not, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys a little bit of my story and then, then I'll tell you why I think it's important to shout these people out. So I had a pretty successful criminal defense practice. Uh, we were doing really, really well. And we made a deliberate choice to foray into this new area of law. It's kind of speculative. And, uh, you know, for, we're not a monster law firm, man. We're there's, we're, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a solo shop. Uh, we have some attorneys that we associate with, but this is, I've done the big law firm life. That's why I, you know, I prefer this, you know, your, your law firm is your business. And so, so when you take a hit to your core business, it's, it's risky. Um, that's why I like, uh, you know, I like to shout out, uh, my, my mentor and close friend, Carlo D'Angelo, Ray Jenko, uh, Ash Kernan, Ellie Torres, uh, Courtney Bowie and, and Oscar Urbina, cause they're out there doing the same thing, man. They're, we're, we're learning this area of law. Um, I've seen a lot of people that before they really get in and understand the law, they just kind of throw up like, you know, I'm a crypto lawyer, or web three lawyer or whatever. And, um, so I encourage everybody to DYOR and, and, and really learn about these attorneys, 
learn who you're talking to before you, you know, before you get into bed with an attorney, because it's, it's going to be a long relationship and you want it to be a good one. So that's, um, that's really important to me. And I think something that plays into what you guys are doing too. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Cause uh, the education part is super important, like you said. And um, you know, especially when you're seeking legal advice, we were, we were talking earlier before this and we had talked about the, the woman that fake that she was a, a lawyer or a crypto lawyer, or was it a lawyer in general? I, you know more about that than I do, Carlos, but that yeah. I saw that and I was like, wow. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you this. It's, it's like one of those things, man, where uh, we all know it happened. And my, my sort of the, the silver lining, I guess, is that it gave the lawyers an opportunity to talk about how to DYOR on your lawyer. And that's what you should do because I, um, whatever results I've gotten in cases, anything like that, a lot of it is public record. And I, I've never really been the type to like hop on Instagram or, or, uh, or Twitter and be like, Hey, I got, you know, a dismissal in this felony case or anything like that. You know, if people want to know, they should check the public record of the jurisdictions, the lawyers practice in Google, like literally, literally just Google and see if it's a licensed lawyer. Um, you can go to the uh, the American Bar Association website or the the website w- you know where they practice in uh, for for the the bar association um, whoever licensed them it's it's kind of different in, in each state but just you know kick the tires a little bit and and you'll find you know if a lawyer's done speaking engagements you'll probably find that on the internet you'll you you know um, and then ask questions ask questions when you get in there. Um, you know, ask them if they own an NFT. That's actually a great place to start. Do you own an NFT? And I don't think that's done often enough. And it's, it's because of sort of the profession that I take really seriously. And I've been doing this thing since I, I, I started my legal career when I was 18 years old in the army JAG Corps. And I spent 17 years in the military uh, as, as a paralegal and a legal administrator. And so it's like part of what I do. I've also, I've been in trouble before, man. I've had to get my own criminal defense attorney. Hey, but can I, can I say like, how can you not eat your own cooking? Like, how could you not understand the importance of something? You got to understand the importance of something. If you're going to give advice on it, or it's like a coach who never played the game. I like, yeah, they could be really good, but you're going to be better when you've been in the seat of the player. So I appreciate that fact. Like you've been yeah. through every role in the in the business you said paralegal from um just being in the in the army and first of all what's the army like um the capacity that you were in it i know there's many different aspects but what was your experience in the military like no it was um and first of all i want to say this really really quick already before we move on so like i think you have a perfect analogy there like the player coach is a great analogy for like the DJ lawyer. So like when it comes to web three, right. So I'm sure you guys have had coaches that, that played before, you know, I guess it's debatable. Do they have to play at a high level? Do they, they have to make it and be a professional is college enough is, you know, really good high school. player. I, I don't know, but just having that experience creates bedside manner. It creates these common sort of shared experiences. And that's, what's impactful. It's not that like, and it has its limits. Like I've defended some high level felony cases. I've never dealt drugs. So it's like, you know, one of those things where, you know, it it, it has its limits, right? It could take you so far. Yeah, exactly. Um, But no, uh, the army was good. The army was good. Uh, And uh, I met some really good people through it. The army JAG Corps. So the army taught me structure like big time. Um, And I think being in the army JAG Corps it, it was like being in a really large law firm and you saw just everything that was going on, very broad practice areas and stuff. If you would have told me 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I, I, I had no idea that I'd be doing what I'm doing now. Um, now when I first joined the army, I didn't even know if I'd make it to law school. I actually went to the army cause I was failing out of college my first year. And I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> got to do something. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was a good journey. Um, I actually just got out, uh, now two months ago from the national guard. My last, uh, tour in Afghanistan was in, in 2018 to 2019. Um, so I was over there. I, you know, I, I wasn't, I was in the JAG course. So I wasn't like a door kicker or anything. What's, I was what's JAG? What's that? Judge advocate generals Corps. 
So it, it's all the lawyers. It's like the lawyers of the the military uh, and the paralegals and 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 legal professionals. So I always make that clear because sometimes I hear some army stories and they're like, yeah, I was over. That was a, like the vast majority. Uh, if you were infantry, special forces, and stuff like that, you were probably out there, you know doing your damn thing a lot of other people got jammed up especially early on in in like iraq and afghanistan but me personally like i don't i mean it was all pretty, pretty hey, normal. You, but know, like, you know what i've been on a team and i know that like everybody pulls their weight right shoot yeah. if you're in afghanistan damn it you're in afghanistan <laughs> I'm also get, you also get the fakers too though that are like they tell people they play but they really don't but but i know i respect i respect because he knows people who probably have been in like you said infantry or whatever but um no man i tip my hat to anybody who's going to stand up and say you know what i'm going to join this group of people who is notoriously the target of the other countries who want to do harm they they're going to look for you so i mean yeah and and and, and i would say to like dip, like some military person probably going to see it and be like oh well i did well here's what is is very true uh, you spend a lot of time away from your family and a lot of time in places that aren't particularly comfortable. And for that, I do have a lot of respect for everyone, you know, that served in the military. hundred uh, percent. But, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's, uh, it's kind of crazy because the military was so, so structured. And now, as you guys know, we're in an industry that's like almost hyper non-structured, like everything's decentralized, everything's a free for all. And it's, it's just a really interesting conversation to be had because is that okay? Is that I like, I don't know the answers to a lot of these questions. I just know that we have to ask them because, you know, for instance, I've been rug pulled before that wasn't great, you know? Um, and, and so I'm sure you guys have been there too. Like you see a project, you're like, oh man, and it always happens in early, in early degen careers, man. You're like, all right, dude. I got yeah. some alpha. I got a little bit of ETH. Yeah. I'm going to make some money, right? Uh, so it's the worst when it's a soft rug, when it's like, oh, it's, it's just like they don't explicitly run away, but it's just, it's very illiquid. These, these yeah. NFTs, they, no they one just wants start to fading buy them. Into the background. They just slowly start fading. The floor price is, is dropping, and you're like, hey, anybody want to take this off my hands? I'll give it to you for yeah. half, half the floor price, a quarter of the floor <laughs> price, please. Please just pay for my gas. Just send it to the hidden folder, man. <laughs> but no, that that's awesome though. To rewind just a little bit, like when did you first enter the NFT space and what what kind of caught your attention? Man, uh, it was all an accident. Uh as 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 our boy Biggie said, it was all a dream. <laughs> uh, but no, it was uh it actually started because of some stale Cheetos uh in 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 one of my old business partners' offices. Uh so we had a law firm and uh, it, it, it was in this building that had other offices in it. And there was this one office. My, my wife would always walk by this guy's office and he, and this was still like, to me, this is, is weird. And, and just, it's weird, man. He would leave the bag of Cheetos completely open. You know, like if you're not a savage, you roll it up man. Yeah. like you, you can't be eating stale Cheetos every day, but bro, I'm telling you, this bag must have lasted about six months in there, man. And he just would, you know, the, the most stale Cheetos uh, on planet Earth. And so I was like, man, this dude must be a really interesting guy, right? So I walk by the office one day. I see he's there. I'm like, all right, man, I'm going to go talk to this weirdo. Um, and so I ended up talking to him. We ended up, uh, we had started a, a, a company a while back. Uh, we've since kind of moved on to other business ventures, but he, he was really into it. He, he was doing some stuff to help uh, market the Board Ape Yacht Club at the time before the Board Ape Yacht Club was what they are now. We just, we kind of started talking. And then one night, um, me and another lawyer, we, we were at our office uh, and, and he had like this legal issue. He came in and, and I didn't really practice in that area, but I was like, you know what, I'll I'll take a look at it. And I just kind of went down the rabbit hole, man. And I started buying NFTs and stuff. And then I really, I just, I got really deep into what digital assets were. And I just, I kind of saw it as something pretty transformational. And then I remember, um, there was this, uh, she was, she's a, a law professor. She's part of one of the, um, the ABA subcommittees that I'm on. And she was talking about how this, how these digital assets are like transforming communities. And, um, I, you know, Juwan, you kind of know my take on, on just how 
like minorities in the world at large. And it, it's like one of those things, man, where like, it's our job to pick each other up. It's not yeah. like no one cares in business. Business is a full contact sport. No one's going to cry for you. No one cares about it. So the best that we can do for each other is help each other out, give each other ideas, lift each other up straight up. Um, and by the way, I don't, I don't think it's like the government's job or anything. It's, it's our job to like do better and show progress. So anyway, that, that happened. So I kind of felt like empowered to like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go try this. And then I just met a really, you know, a lot of really good people along the way. Uh, my boy, Zach Lewis, uh, he started a, a discord called blockchain barristers. There's like, you know, a few hundred lawyers in there. We argue all the time i guess about about it you do best yeah man um and listening because we have so many like talented like older lawyers in there uh, and i don't mean in that like like in the pejorative i mean like people who have really established legal careers that you can just kind of sit back and say okay like i'm going to really learn from the experience that you you have and then i had kind of an interesting story i had a, a guy come in for a um pretty high level drug felony um and he he didn't really have any money. Uh, and I was like, you know, I'm, it's a, it's a private law firm, bro. I don't, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but he, he did say, but I do have this JPEG of a mutant ape. Yeah. So, so it was, uh, at the time it was wait, we're, we're not talking mutant apes now we're talking think mutant apes like seven months ago. So this, it wasn't like, like it is now, like that comes in the office now and you're like, Whoa, shit. Um, but back then it, uh, you know, it all kind of worked out for him and for us. Uh, unfortunately I had to let Charlie go to, to keep our, our other company alive back in December. One of my, so, regrets. so you got the eight. Yeah. 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 And so you we, named it Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to me, not to <laughs> never, never name your pet in case you got to kill him. Oh, dude. <laughs> I, know. I know that was my, my virtual old yeller story. Uh, but uh that's cool yeah. though man like it takes a lot of foresight because it's one thing to uh like speculate and gamble on on nfts and crypto but it's another thing to you know pretty much accept that in your business as like the like it's a business right you don't play with that that's you work hard to establish that business and to keep it afloat, you need to actually generate cash flow. So you had to have some kind of conviction about that, that asset when you accepted it. Yeah. And, and to tell you the truth, bro. And I, I think this is, I think this is the case for a lot of things in the NFT industry. Like I had no clue that BAYC was going to be what it is now. Like, no, I think very few people understood like, you know, what influences came into play to make it what it is. There's probably some people that are like, yeah, I knew ahead of time. I'm like, dude, you only know ahead of time because it, it, like this happened. If, if it wouldn't have happened, yeah. there's plenty of communities that were supposed to be the one. Um, but I didn't know, like I didn't, it was, for me, it was more like I, I was super curious about it and I wanted to sort of push the boundaries to see how the world was going to be affected by this disruptive technology. And even now, one thing that, um, that we're learning and that we're, we're constantly refining, uh, it, it is like little stuff, like how do you ethically accept cryptocurrency or digital assets as payment for somebody's legal case? Cause it's not, you know, if I'll give you an example, like if I get something or if a client says, well, I don't have money, but I can pay you. And I think that that asset is going to go up in value dramatically right away. It'd probably be unethical of me to accept that as payment, knowing that, that that was going to happen. So there's all these different like provisions and stuff. And, you know, when I come back to it, really a lot of it's about bedside manner. Cause I, again, I've been rugged, bought NFTs before. Uh, so I kind of like, I get the DJ mindset. I've stayed up at all hours, obnoxious hours of the night. I'm sure you guys have been there. It's like, this thing's minting. Let's go. Let's yeah. go nice. yeah. Or you, or you stay up trying to catch the gray price going down or uh, the gas price going down, bro. The, can you imagine this? Imagine seeing like this. It's like you know Monday morning quarterback here. But imagine seeing something and you're like, no, I don't want to pay that gas price or it looks too expensive. And then it goes parabolic and it's not like 0.5 ETH. But next time you see it, it's like. 50. That's yeah. wild to me. It's wild pain, pain. And it's a real story that happens at least once a month. <laughs> what was the last month? It was obviously it was, um, the eight Moon birds. No, that was, a, Oh, so it's not even every month. It's every two weeks now. What was the oh, one? That, it's, it's frequent. What was the one they just did with the coin with the land sale? Oh, um, other deeds, other yeah, deeds, yeah, yeah. Other, deeds yeah. Yeah. other deeds went crazy. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this is one area where, you know, 
sometimes lawyers are a little rain cloud. The ethical, law, the, or let, let me rephrase that. Sometimes lawyers with certain opinions can be rain clouds because there's a lot of things that happened with uh, with the sale of other side deeds that probably shouldn't have happened because there was a KYC process in place. You had to be KYC approved. And I'm sure you guys saw a couple of people out there saying, oh, let's broker a deal and you can use my uh, KYC approved wallet. And the, the problem is that when when you KYC for an asset that ties it to you, so it just, it creates all these like issues, right? And so you sit back and you see that and you're like, man, I know you're, bro, I know you're young. I know you want to get the money, Try, like take a step back. Cause it might, might come back to bite you, you know? Okay. So I actually had a question about that because I don't know how old this dude is, but somebody, a lot of people said he was young. There was a dude on Twitter who, who openly came out and said he bought 306 other deeds with 306 KYC wallets. And yeah. is that and not fraud? No, first of all, yeah. where the hell is he getting that money from? Bro, hey, people, dude, people came to him yeah. and, and he said, I trust me, I can get you guys this land. And he did it. And he openly gloated about it on Twitter and people came for him. So that was actually a question for you. Like when it comes to, you know, these like KYC, like we just saw and like these regulations, are people, should people be more cautious than they are right now in your, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I think they should. Um, and I'll give you something. This was a good, I, I mean, I'm just floored by how much I learn every day from other like really good lawyers in the space. Yeah. So, like tonight we were having a conversation um, about marketing and advertising and, and what you, you can and can't do, you know, under, under certain provisions that, that the FTC oversees or over certain laws and regulations. One of them that, and, and this is like something that most people don't know, uh, you know, depending on how you endorse a product, uh, it's probably a good idea to put like hashtag ad in there. If, if you're associated with the product, if it's an ad and, and these little tiny practices, but I'd say by and large, we're just in such a, a new young industry that they don't, they don't really pay attention all the time. Um, should they be more careful? Yeah. I would say maybe it's better to say they should be more educated uh, and then, and then make the decision. Um, uh, and then, you know, make, make, if you're an adult, if you're over 18, then make your own decision, but at least find out the information first. And again, go, going back to what you guys are doing in your discord and, and you're using your platform and your voice for is to educate people like that. So whatever choices they make, it's like, okay, cool. But just get the information first, you know? Yeah. Hey, so do, I mean, I'm not asking you to pass judgment on something, but does it matter if somebody is acting like in good faith? Or if they're just outright like being negligent, does that not matter at all? The the criminal defense lawyer in me says, yeah, hey, dude, if we're doing it for the right reasons, right, it's all good. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you the lawyer answer. Is that a sticky? Is that a sticky question to ask? Is it loaded? You know, it's there's such a, a like Web three law, and I know like I kind of have like this little moniker like Web three lawyer thing, but um, in reality, it's not like we practice all, like frequently we'll find a specialist that we refer someone to or that we associate with. So web three law really just, it's us linking like the IRL stuff with what's going on in the metaverse as best we can. Cause a lot of like, the, like, like normal laws will apply. So it just, it really depends. I say that all to tell you, it just depends on what the situation is. Like if it's, it's is there some situations where it's going to be uh helpful yeah maybe i mean you know in criminal law there's different standards of intent i mean if it's if it's an intentional sort of thing maybe some good faith helps uh if you get into a situation that involves the transfer of you know some sort of property then you know good faith bona fide purchaser yeah it could help but i'll give you an example of things that uh where it might not help uh like the sec for instance has made statements that you know there's not going to be any safe harbor or amnesty for any any projects or people that create what's otherwise considered a security. You know, will it help in that respect? Probably not. But again, it just it depends. So the other thing that I know too, and um, and this is sort of the 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 challenge of starting off in this industry, um, especially like for the smaller law firms, there is a a need for legal help, but 
a lot of projects where it's changing now because there's more successful projects, more money in the industry, and more people are willing to take it seriously. But there's a lot of startups out there that don't necessarily have the resources for like legal and marketing and all, all these things. Again, go back to education, man. Let's like, let's spread the good word, put some information out there and hope that people take it seriously. And you brought up the, the term security. For those who don't know what a security is, uh, would you be able to explain uh, what that is? Yeah, so so a security, uh, really we start with something called an investment contract. An investment contract at, at its very basic core level is like, I say, give me money and I'll do something with that money and you'll get like a return. So so a lot of times you'll hear the, the, uh, the term Howie test, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that yet. The Howey test is is the, it, it's a pretty old uh, case. It, it comes from a, a case like decades ago uh, and involved like an orange grove. So there's I won't bore anyone with the details, but here's the test. Okay, um, it's are you making an investment of money into a common enterprise with the expectation of profits solely or predominantly from the efforts of others. And so if you think about it, there's a lot of different things that could probably be classified as a security. Um, but, but a lot of, you know, enforcement actions haven't come down yet in the NFT space. There's been a fair amount of litigation uh, in the crypto space, uh, but I think we're going to start seeing more and more enforcement actions. Uh, just a few days ago, the SEC like doubled its capabilities for, for a lot of the cyber stuff that's going on for, you know, um, and, and my guess is, is it's like solely aimed at like digital assets. The other thing that, um, at least in the U S that I encourage people to do is go look at the government contracts and who's being brought on for different, uh, blockchain analyses. So like chain analysis is getting a lot of money from the federal government right now from various agencies to go in there and figure out who you are. If something, if, if you, if you see it, make, make its way to like some ETH, make its way from a bad transaction to a, a KYC approved exchange, a, a centralized exchange, you know, you could probably get that person's identity. In fact, we have a, a lawsuit right now. Uh, and anyone can look this up. It's pu public record. Uh, it, it's Farfetch Labs versus Chum Chum number 7777. Uh, and our legal theory um, by the way, I'll give the disclaimer. No, nothing that I'm saying is legal advice. This is just a conversation, right? No, no legal or financial advice from, from any of the three gentlemen, any of the and, three and, and, and not life advice either. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, no, life. Maybe, maybe not maybe a hint of life, but just a little bit. Uh, but we'll also give the disclaimer. Do not try this at home. So the, uh, we, we have a, a case right now. So our, our theory is that, uh, you know, potentially we, we try to subpoena some records from Coinbase to get the person's real identity and serve them. Uh, we've also been sort of toying around with some novel ideas about uh, airdropping uh, a lawsuit or a cease and desist letter into somebody's actual, um, you know, what? I'll be honest with you guys. The, the big reason that, that I have chosen not to do any of that, even though it's probably fair game and it needs to be tried is because I wanted to be the right time and not look like, like just a total publicity stunt. Because you know how the industry is, man. People will see it. Wow. I think there's a... Man, there's so much to cover. Like, it, law works off precedence, right? So more or less, something had to happen before where they passed the judgment one way or the other. And then you look back in time and you're like, well, they did this for that guy. So in this case, that's an example that you should work off of. Is that more or less how law goes? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a couple like, you know, nuances, you know, is it, a, is it a superior court to the one that you're, you're litigating in? If there, like, there's some, some limits to that. Like if there's a law that's straight up on point, then, mm -hmm. you know, you get, and that's where attorneys come in. They, they kind of like, that's their you know, job is to tell that story. Yeah. 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 You tell, you know, a, a lot of your job uh, as a litigator is uh, you know, let me tell you a story. Can, can I tell a judge or a jury a story? Can I take, can I gather everybody around the campfire and have them like believe what I am saying? And I don't mean that in a manipulative way, but, but how well can you convey your client's story? How well can you advocate for them and, and, and really have people buy into what you're saying? Um, for, we have a great, great example of this going on right now, uh, which by my, my wife and kids. So I'm, I'm kind of like a hard headed dude, man. And for family movie night a couple of weeks ago, uh, I made them watch like day four of the, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. 
uh because i was like yeah yeah someday my daughter is gonna be like a way better lawyer than me so wait that's like the equivalent of me making my son watch monday night football yeah dude yeah man it it's has... just like way more fun or <laughs> yeah no but monday night football i i give you that man it's it's much harder for for the lawyer dads than the football dads all right we got it hard out here in these streets man all right it's <laughs> You can only make like, you know, litigating so entertaining, but no, like, like watch that, you know, watch how they, how people cross examine other folks. How, and, and one thing that I observed, maybe you guys, I don't know if you guys saw any of the trial or anything, but I just go, go watch a little of it. It's so interesting. Some of the attorneys will get up there on cross examination and they're like bulldogs. Like you did this, you did this, you did that. You, and, and everyone has their different, you know, style, but I've always been more like, let's, let's just talk. Okay. Uh, you, you know, uh, speech is the lubrication of information and the more comfortable somebody is, they're just going to be like, blah, 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 blah. you know, they're just going to start telling you everything but on the criminal defense side. That's why I tell people to be, beyond giving your ID. Don't, don't talk to the cops. Don't feel pressured. Cause the second that you start saying something, you're going to want to say more and it's human nature to explain and you're going to want to say this and that and then next thing you know you know yeah next thing you know it's 1-800 for a friend (laughs) better call Saul so let me me, one phone call right right okay so let me I want to backtrack a little bit like we're talking about um how there's a little bit of like it's 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 very loose in crypto in the sense that there are not as many of those hard and fast rules or precedents that are set in the definition of what is this and what is that and what is not, it's not as clear. Um, Do you think part of the reason for maybe the reason why they haven't um, passed judgment on so many of these different opportunities where they might have had a chance is just because they don't know which way they want to go yet. And when they do, they're, they're going to do it at scale, or is it simply because they don't have the manpower, the people power to cover as many cases as there are? Like, where do you think is the reason why they're not moving faster in the industry that is clearly not going away? Yeah, you, so you bring up, and this is my observations after a very long time in the federal government, you mentioned a word scale. Once the government, whether it's the army or any other organization learns to do something at scale, then the floodgates open. And I, I really do think all it takes is a few good cases and then they'll kind of have things figured out. Right. I don't, I really don't know. I like, you know, because I haven't seen it, this is kind of unprecedented, at least in my lifetime, um, how fast the industry has grown. Maybe part of it is that the industry just, just grew so fast that they were like, it literally just hasn't had time to catch up, but there's been litigation going on for a while that, that a lot of people don't mention. Everyone mentions like the sec. That's like the big one, right? One of the earliest cases was with Tezos and the CFTC. And it established, you know, there was some precedent. This was back in like 20, I want to say 2017. And that kind of established like a long arm jurisdiction precedent. There there was a couple of cases where, um, and then this one again was involving Tesla's where uh, they established some offshore entities and they were like, hey, we're offshore. You can't touch us. But, you know, if you're availing yourself to the American market, then probably not the case. So there's, um, there's a lot of different factors that I think contribute to it. My suspicion is that, the industry has just moved so fast. And the other thing is that we're dealing with largely open source decentralized stuff so that the pace of innovation is just like, bro, it's so rapid. It is Mm -hmm. so, so rapid. Mm -hmm. Especially because if you create, uh, you create Uniswap, then I can fork it and create sushi swap in like a week and a half. And now that's two different entities. Um, both requiring equal amount of human resources to, you know, put litigation against them. So yeah, you're right. It is, it's, it's quite, it's quite the uh, Rubik's cube, if you will, you know, <laughs> this whole crypto thing is, is crazy. A hey, one, one case that I think was monumental. I'll want to get your take on is, um, you know, circle, they had this savings account um, where it had like a high yield and you deposit crypto and you get some yield back or something like that. And it was, deemed that it was a security and people were even the CEO of circle was like, this is can't be a security. It's a savings account. You know what I mean? And this is the guy that's running the entire company. Anyways, it comes back that yes, apparently a savings account is a security and they find them like a hundred million dollars, but now everybody's clear 
that like, okay, if you're going to do this kind of savings account, you need these attestations, you need yeah. this kind of regulation, you need this kind of reporting, blah, blah, blah. When you do think that like regulations and stuff come down, what does that do for the industry? Does it, does the speed of innovation speed up? Does it wash out some of the bad actors? What do you think happens next? Bro, that that's, man, that's a quick, you guys got until like 3 a.m. this morning and we made <laughs> Scratch the surface because there's there's so many things that that are wrapped up in that that we we don't have answers yet. Like I think no, number one, okay, so y- you start from the premise that we need some rules, some some kind of rules because p- like, man, if we let people go wild, like the rich are just gonna get richer, and and it's not like in this digital economy, right? I, and I I really do think that you're seeing it play out now when whales can move markets and at, at like nothing against the whales they're like i have nothing against capitalism or make it you know i don't um i just think there that it needs to be a level playing field and i'm not saying like a redistribution of wealth or anything like that i'm just saying let's have some predictable rules so i think that's a big thing uh the other thing is like anonymity that's a very hot topic like is anonymity good? Is anonymity bad? Is it like, what, you know, what do we do about it? Is it okay to have like privacy online? I think privacy is a good thing. Owning your own information is a really good thing. And that's what decentralized sort of, that's what web three stands for. Web three, web three. A lot of people don't even know what web three is. They're like, Oh man, is this like, is this web three? Is this a way? Is and I'm like, let me tell you, web three is like a series of like concepts, not, not, a thing like you don't show up one day and you're like bro we just hopped from two to three we made it <laughs> we're at the promised land this is it this is it right um it's not like that like web3 is decentralized and it runs off of, of many different nodes in the blockchain as opposed to one centralized database uh and there's even debates and nuances in that so is is anonymity okay man that's a hard damn question to answer I don't know, because if there's bad actors and they're anonymous, think about a bad actor being able to do things at scale. I just want to disappear. I become someone else. Um, no, and, and I've heard some people analogize it to like, uh, are, is there, are there corrupt politicians? Well, yeah, there are corrupt politicians. But, you know, uh, unless they're Nicolas Cage and face off, they're not take, you know, becoming someone new. So it's like, yeah, but they get like they get marked and it goes with them. And that doesn't happen with anonymity. Um, and I see the other side of the argument too. Like I get to be whoever I want in the metaverse. I get to, and there's all these like deep philosophical questions that get wrapped up in it. I listened to a really good podcast uh, by a guy named Sean Carroll. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's he's like a, a physicist, really smart guy. He had, he had this podcast where uh, his guest was talking about um, our identities in the metaverse. And this, this old lady called her grandkid and she's like, you want me to come, you know, you want me to come visit you, Sonny? That, that sort of thing. And uh, they had only been like in the metaverse together with these avatars. And he's like, yeah, grandma. And she, she asked, he asked like, or she asked him what, what he thought that she looked like. And he's like, well, you're, you're, you're like a unicorn with a cat body or something like something like that. Right. But it creates all these like different weird issues. I think it's healthy for us to find out what they are. There's just a lot of uncertainty if that's if it's you know it's yet to be written if it if it's good bad or whatever it's progress but you know that's as much as i think we could say with with everything that we've experienced so far and all the rules and regulations that may be coming into the space how attainable do you think decentralization is because i know like if you go on my timeline everybody thinks you know we make the rules uh when corporate brands come into web three, we have to establish a culture. And I'm like, well, no, I'm pretty sure the government is going to have some say in what we're doing here. Does that make it truly decentralized? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's, it's a balancing act, man, because mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know that we could just trust people, mm-hmm. anonymous people to make the rules. I, I, I don't think that. So yeah. to all those people out there that are hardcore anonymity, we can trust everyone. No, you can't. Like, and I'll just, I'll say it flatly. And there's a lot of people that'll probably disagree with that, but I don't think that's the case because I think that, you know, we're human beings, we're, we're very economically driven and there's nothing wrong with that. We just yeah. have to, be able to call it what it is. Like we're economically driven. Do you want more? Do you guys want more? Like, 
Courtney Juan, you guys want some more money? Are you guys going to tell me no? If you do like, and I won't say no, but, but we just got to be honest about those things. Yeah. So I think there has to be somebody that, that sets the rules. I don't know what those rules will look like. And I think it's possible, but here's what I think the balancing act is. And here's where I think lawyers and the courts come in. Like if we say, okay, there should be less regulation. Well, then there should be more private lawsuits because there has to be a forcing mechanism somewhere. Right. And all that's an issue if there's anonymity. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It doesn't mean that we're litigious or overly litigious. It doesn't mean that we're, we're, you know, anybody's out there being a, you know, a scummy like lawyer or a project trying to sue somebody. It means that there is a lack of enforcement mechanisms. Therefore, we got to do something legally within the bounds of the law. So I think it's kind of a balancing act. And in the next couple of months, so it, in, in the US, we, we have uh, an executive order that happened a couple months ago. A lot of different reports were required in that. Um, there, I think June is when the first one is going to be due from from a few of the agencies. And I, I'm I'm curious to see what comes of that because right now you have like all these agencies like no I do this I do that I like we have overlap but I want to enforce this. So I I don't know that it's going to be super efficient. I think lawyers are going to be very busy for a long time because we're we're going to see a lot of things just just randomly sort of pop up. But I also think it's a good thing because it's progress. Whether whether we go through sort of like these these bad times, so to speak, that is an okay thing in, in, in the road to progress, like in that journey. Totally. And also being in the metaverse, like if you compare it to real, real life, when there wasn't as much uh, structure or repercussions for things, if somebody did you wrong, you punched them in the face. Mm -hmm. And so how are you going to punch somebody in the face in the metaverse if they you know rug you or yeah, they man, sell you avatar, bro. <laughs> get that mike tyson avatar ready right uh, so that's what i'm saying is to your point there has to be a forcing mechanism either it's person to person to enforce some kind of you know you have to you have to treat people in a, a certain way you can't just be rogue yeah. cowboy and destroying people's wealth left right and center that's that's not how you make a productive society so i definitely understand where you're coming from. It either has to be a, a centralized set of rules or it has to be open to people pursuing, you know, private litigation on certain things that happen. Yeah. Otherwise it'll be crazy. And that's the danger of anonymity. There's no accountability because there, there has to, at the very least, there has to be accountability. And that's where a lot of these problems come in. And I, I don't, I think I'm, I might be a little bit older. How, how old are you guys? I'm 33 this year. I'm 32 right now. 29. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're kind of close. I'm 35. Um, so we're, we're we, we was in high school at the same time. JB yeah, was yeah. in great. JB was in grade seven. Yeah, no, we're, we're good, man. We were, uh, we're kind of all from like a, uh, like the way I grew up is very different than how my kids are growing up. And I have, I have a daughter who's going to be a high schooler next year. I, you know, I, I had kids really young. I see the social pressures and stuff like Back in my day, if, you know, if someone was saying something, maybe there was like a fight, um, not in a violent way. Well, no, scratch that in a violent way, but not in a, like today they're over drama. It wasn't as melodramatic now. It was just kind of like, okay, there's fight, there's whatever. Now it's like, we have all these anti-bullying campaigns and stuff like that, which is, is good in theory, but it, it makes us not have to confront some really important issues that that life are gonna is gonna throw your way are things gonna go our way all the time no all of us know they're not are you always gonna be in a position where you can work really well with someone around you and just talk out the issue no you're not and and so like all of these things are are changing society um you know it's easy to say you know the, this generation is soft and stuff but but like th really think about what the, the, the impact is rather than good or bad or anything, just what is the impact? So now we, we don't have to confront these problems kind of plays back into the anonymity. Cause you don't have to, you know, confronting problems is a lot about accountability and responsibility. Like how do you navigate these, these social pressures? Um, same thing with anonymity. Now you don't have to like, you do whatever you want, man. Um, and, and, and you never have to answer for it. So it's right. just, Really, I, that's why I love this industry because I'm so like every day I'm just caught in this constant loop of thought and I might change my mind from day to day. Like if I hear some new perspective, I'm like, oh, well, you know what, that, that makes a little bit more sense than what I had thought. And that's an okay thing too, like to just like grow and change.
Right. You know what, though? I um, When we talk about anonymity, what comes to my mind is uh, we're talking about the centralized government. And then in this world, the, the heavy hitters are like anonymous Lazarus group, like these massive hacker cartels that based on like IPs, they kind of know where they're from, but mm-hmm. they have no idea who these people are. And they're actually the ones who control the internet. Like anonymous is likely to shut down traffic lights in a whole city if they wanted to, but yeah. they, they tend to be more like vigilantes going after bad guys and um, trying to keep, yeah, trying to keep people on the straight and narrow for the most part. But nonetheless, like, these anonymous groups, I think it's it's like a thing that couldn't have existed before. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, this was not even possible. So I think it's a conversation that's going to continue to pop up, you know, um, who, who are behind these, these avatars and these PFPs and these lines of code, who's really behind that? That's a question I'm always going to be asking. Yeah, it's, I, yeah, right. And that's all like that. That's really what a lot of these conversations come down to. You just kind of end it with a, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, because because there's so much that's that's unwritten man and think about it if you have control over like a city's electrical grid but like that 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 is more impactful than you know an, than guns or anything you know right they they hacked the oil the oil refinery earlier this year or last year i think it was somebody did that and, and hold it for cyber yeah. ransom they had to send bitcoin which is stupid because eventually that bitcoin is oh yeah <laughs> it's gonna get Bro, traced. Like, see, that's the, I I think in this space, uh, and and one reason I'm I'm gonna stay very uh, sharp with my criminal defense skills is because this is like this. A lot of the bad actors are like the smartest dumb bad actors ever. Like nothing hides on the blockchain. You know, yeah. man, maybe like you. Run that's it. what it's there for. Yeah, yeah, and and from an attorney's perspective, man. Now I don't have to go like request all this discovery from a bank and get bank records. I could just follow you. Like it's going to ether scan. Yeah, exactly. You go on ether scan or any, like, I mean, pretty much every blockchain out there that anyone does anything on, you're, you're able to like find these transactions. So it's like, it's good and it's bad. And, and maybe people think, Oh, okay. It's so like transparent that we don't need to, like an anonymity is okay. Cause it's super transparent, but it's like, <laughs> pseudonymous pseudonymous that's yeah, what it yeah. is jb I, I i see you over there you're like damn this technical talk man i'm loving it i'm loving it <clears throat> but I, w- I was gonna ask like with web3 lawyers right what it what is your goal with that it, is it like to educate is it to represent some of the the bigger projects in the space like what what was your goal when you started that yeah so you know it's kind of it's changed over time and now it's like we we kind of when we started we we wanted to like explore this new area of law and it's actually really good because all of us that sort of came together originally now we're all finding our own ways everyone's building their own their own brand and so really we have a couple of missions number one um and this is like every everyone who i consider you know just friends in the space that are lawyers i I know a lot of them want to be out there just educating people telling them like hey uh this is what you can do to to sort of you know, get yourself the information you need. Um, me personally, the sort of the brand that I'm trying to build um, is one where I, I don't, I don't aspire to have like this monster law firm. I want to have like maybe 10 clients at a time where um, I can just really focus on their issues. Uh, I'm, I'm really focused on like in, things like intellectual property and the regulatory environment. And then of course, like the business structures, all that, that comes with it. But um Outside of that, when I have a case come in, I'll associate with another attorney that's an expert in the field. Um, so that's really my mission to be to be really, really good at intellectual property and um, and and these sort of regulatory issues that are popping up, and then to know who to call when I have a client that calls me. Because oftentimes, what I find, I'll give you a perfect example. Right now, I am trying to find a gaming attorney to work with because gaming is a very complex area of law that also 
understands at least like a, a at a very shallow level like cryptocurrencies and how those things work because i have a client that's trying to do this this new sort of version of a casino and that's hard to find so mm. so a lot of the times what i find myself doing is acting as a bridge for my clients to other people with deeper expertise and then sort of translating okay this is what the decentralized cryptocurrency nft version looks like and now we're just applying this new technology to some established laws. So that's the role that I think I play. And the reason that um, that I know that my clients find value is because lawyers aren't cheap. And if you have to go in and explain for four or five hours what you're trying to do, when somebody has no clue what's going on, you, you're, you're going to waste time and resources. Um, so that's sort of where we come in. We're able to take it because we just, we, we live it. We're, I mean... Like, you know, Juwan, you see me in spaces like yeah, almost every that's how I got you on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like we're we're in spaces, we're talking with people in the industry. And sometimes we forget how few of us there are. Like we really, really do. It's not like um, it's not like everybody it may seem like that to us because we're always like chopping it up with other people in, in the, the echo chamber. Exactly, man. But then you get out and you talk to a regular person, they're like, What? Yeah. you know and and it's funny when you bring up like um like i've done this before if people are just like what the what are you talking about um i'll say something like uh i'll reference i don't know uh b-a-y-c I'll, I'll say something about board api and they're like what's that and i'm like oh man we really like we're really just so early on and I yeah. don't, and we lose sight of it, you know, cause we, it's just, it's really easy to do when, when we do this. Now I will say in the next 12 to 24 months, maybe that's not the case because it's, it's like exponential. How many people are, are starting to, to get involved and, and, you know, it's that thing where like one person gets involved, they tell two friends and those two friends tell two friends, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I think we're getting there now. Um, but it's just super interesting, man. And and a lot of people are just interesting. Like you guys are interesting. I'm yeah. like, I'm having a good time sitting here chopping it up with you. And you find uh, a lot. You're so, you're solid, man. These this this whole space is, I feel like it gives us common ground. Like you don't have to be from the same area. You probably don't even have to study the same thing, play the same sport. Because that's where I find most of my friends playing ball. You yeah, know, that's where that's like the. It's like you go to the library to meet people who are into this studying, or you go to the mall to meet people in this, like crypto. We're all into some way, shape, or form, yes. um, this technology, right? So, um, I guess we're as we're like kind of getting to the back end of this, I gotta ask, not necessarily legal, but it could be anything. Like, what kind of advice do you have for people who are starting? Pro oh, did I just I hijack, gonna ask that? I hijacked your question. <laughs> no, go ahead. That's why you're my dog, though. <laughs> no, but what kind of advice do you have for people who are starting projects? Yeah. You know, maybe they're NFTs, maybe they're you know, doing a, a some a liquidity protocol, a, a DEX, or whatever it may be. What do you? What kind of advice do you have for people who are starting crypto businesses, NFT businesses, Web three businesses? That that's a great question, and that's really important too. Number one, first and foremost, um, just and, and again, I want to like this is not legal advice to the people who see. This is just my my take on what I think are really important things. First and most important thing: establish a legal business entity. In, in whatever jurisdiction you need to, please, please, please do that because that's going to protect your personal wealth from all the business activities. And we're, we're, you know, we're in a space where a lot of people are just like, let's go, let's figure it out, whatever. Um, but do that because that, that, that does mean something that means something from the time that you start contracting with an artist to use their uh, art in a PFP to the time it's sold to somebody else. Like there's, there's contracts all the way through, there's liabilities all over the place. So start a business entity. just start a business entity, start a business entity. That's my, that's number one. Okay. Um, number two is in so much as your resources allow you to get yourself some advice, even if it's just for free, just hopping into spaces, you know, listen to people that have done marketing, listen to people, uh, listen to, to lawyers in the space that get out and just talk about these issues. Uh, you know, go and, and get involved in, in something like new school DGENs and, and, uh, you know, seriously, like get involved in, in discords like that, where you can just ask questions and don't th look, don't think you're asking a dumb question because there's probably hundreds of people that have that question and it, it is okay to ask things that you view as simple. So do that. I mean, you're anonymous anyway, ask it. 
like, yeah. and then change your profile. Do, yeah. You know, do recreate your identity, right? Um, but that that's the, the next thing. Just find the information. You know, find the information. And then the third thing I. I would say is, is um, just make sure that you have like a purpose behind what you're doing, man. Cause there, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of projects that come out that don't like, there's no utility. They just kind of, they say there's utility and then it, it's that slow rug, you know, Copy pasta. Yeah, man. Just, just do that. And, and, and look, there's nothing wrong with copying and make it better. If you have the intention to make it better and do something with it. But um, you know, just th- those are kind of the three big ones for me. Awesome. Let me ask you guys, what are the three things that you would tell somebody doing a project? Cause you guys are doing a project right now too. And I don't know if you got like, it may seem like there's a lot of projects, but there's not that many projects. There's like a lot of new people coming in. So what are you mm-hmm. guys, what are your top three things that you would just tell someone, Hey, this is something I've learned along the way. Like, man, I mean, uh, me and me and Courtney have a bit of the same ethos. I know he, lo- he loves to say, and, and over time for me, cause he, he's a Bitcoin guy and he's kind of influencing me. Uh, don't trust verify for sure. The, and these are mine, but I know he'll probably have some of the same. Um, definitely education is important. Um, it's important to find like a network of people that you can trust that know what they're talking about. Um, I I talked about this in a last, in a previous episode that I didn't know who to trust and you run into people that don't have the best intentions, but you may not know what the kind of culture is like. So it's like, Oh, this is normal. But then you're like, eh, I don't think that this is right. Or I don't think what you're telling me is the, is good information. And then I would say like, if you're investing, if you're putting your money into something, um, make sure that you're putting your money into teams that have built something or teams that you've had the opportunity to get to know, like if you're in their discord, if you're in their spaces, you can kind of have an idea of what they're about. Um, just by interacting with them or seeing how they interact with other people, how they carry themselves online. Um, So I feel like those are my three things. Um, How about you, Courtney? I don't know if I have three more to tack on that, but I definitely would say for a builder, um, don't rush your timeline just because you have a certain timeline that you shared publicly because nothing would be worse than shipping something that isn't ready. I think a lot of projects end up being, they end up feeling like a rug to everybody because the creators didn't understand that they were actually starting a business. They weren't just making a collection of pictures or they weren't just putting out a web page that does some cool functions. They're starting a community of people that needed to be nurtured and spoken to, and you need to have customer support and communication, and you need to have iterations of your product, and you need to continue improving and Um, providing value over time. So if you ship too early, I think it's a risk that you're not actually ready to sustain the product that you built. And so I think that'd be like my biggest advice for anybody in the space. And if you're investing, I would always just say, like, make sure you form your own opinions because you can't borrow someone else's conviction when, when your, your favorite crypto is down 70%, they're not going to be there to tell you, should you sell it? Should you hold it? Uh, you know, that's, that's a tough one. I see it a lot though. So, um, form your own opinions. Definitely. For sure, man. And that, that we may not be far off from that digital asset winter. Cause I think we're, we're, we're starting to see the, the market move in a certain direction. Um, but know that it's okay. Like to anybody who watches this, look, digital assets are here to stay. It may be rough for a few months. Have an IRL job, man. Uber, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm just fucking. You know. <laughs> hey, mind that fiat, however you got to do it. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with doing stuff IRL too. In fact, I encourage a lot of people to do like ha- have an IRL, <laughs> have an IRL, like outside the metaverse, do that. Yeah. You know why too? Because, um, and I don't, I'm not trying to turn this into an investing podcast, but, um, not like, financial advice for everybody, that not knows. financial advice, but this is, this is some self-awareness for you. If you ever find yourself getting excited, that's a bad thing because m- money should not be emotional. It is innately something that triggers emotions, elation, fear, greed, regret, guilt. Um, but you got to make objective calculated 
programmatic decisions with your finances and keep a clear mind. So uh, if you're feeling all that stuff, it probably means that your position size is too big. You got to scale back, make sure you got something for groceries and gas money because gas is going up. So um, Yeah. Yeah. No, ga- gas is going up. ETH is going down. So hey, just- right. Uh, no, that's, that's good stuff, guys. Uh, let me ask you guys this as, as we're coming to a close here. What, I mean, what can I do to help you guys out? I mean, you're, doing a good it. Dude. you're a good dude, man. You're, you're, I would say you're doing it. I mean, and, and I mean, you joined our discord, so I know that you're, you're going to be in there asking questions or answering questions. Um, but I mean, even being on the podcast and just sharing your um, knowledge, that that's all we can really ask for. And um, just in the space, I would say just keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep educating people, keep sharing your knowledge, keep hopping in those spaces. Cause like that's so organic and natural to, you know, a lot of people may not see lawyers and attorneys in that light. They may seem like, you know, these guys are shady people or they just want my money. Um, so the fact that you're in there, like, like I said, I, I think you were in the, in the space, uh, coffee with captain that's where i'm usually at in the morning and i heard you come on and your voice and what you were saying and i was like yo i'm dming him gotta get him on the podcast because we haven't had anybody that covers law one and two you seem like a really dope dude dope genuine guy so i was like it's a perfect fit you know what i mean so just keep being you really thanks man who hey one more question who, who are your teams like who are your nfl teams Dallas Cowboys. Tampa Brady. Well, okay. Number one, Juwan, come on out to Texas, man. Come come by the studio. We'll uh we'll do I, I really want to. Man, it's 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 a good time uh over here in West Texas and and uh we, we got Cowboys gear aplenty. Oh, I've uh, been to the to the airport in Dallas. It's oh yeah, it's, it's like a dream for me. Yeah. No, it's it's cool, man. And uh Brady bro who can even at this point i stopped hating on brady like four years ago man i'm like it's just he's he's he he is like he's not even a human man he played so long and he was so good for so long that like other people came in the league after him retired before him and still went to the hall of fame like have have you ever seen like his combine pictures and stuff he just looks like like a, a janitor Dude, he, look, like, he looks this, like Vitalik. <laughs> this guy, this guy was going straight from the combine to teach seventh grade math in middle school, bro. That that's what Tom Brady. Like you look at him and you're like, what? What is going on? But he's skillful. He's gifted, man. He's yeah. the man. He's the man. You can't. When they were down 28 points to Atlanta and came back and won, that's when I looked in the mirror. I said, "You're a hater." You don't like this guy? You have to like this guy. And since then, I've been like his biggest fan. Yeah. No, I, I agree. We all want to be Tom Brady. Even the haters. I'm like, hey, man, you're hating because you want to be this dude. Don't don't get it twisted. You know why He's you're good. Hating. He's good. No, but this is this. JB. JB's Wi-Fi choked. You're running. <laughs> He, he got soft hey, rug. Dude, hey, hey, he just tossed you the ball, man. It's you all got- good. Look, go, let's tell, go. T- tell the people where they could connect with you, man. You guys can connect with, with me on Twitter. Oh, He's back. He's back. Look We're going to have to edit that out. We're going to have to edit that out. Nah, keep it, Jimmy. This Chicago Jimmy. internet is terrible, man. What, what you got? Um, What do they call that? It's not Kojiko. What do they got I think out there? I think I got Xfinity. Xfinity. Knock off. Anyways. Yeah. Um, Carlos, tell the people where they can connect with you and get more of that good information, man. Absolutely. Uh, on both Twitter and Instagram, my handle is Carlos G underscore ESQ. So just like Carlos G Esquire underscore Esquire. Um, and I, I really spend, I spend a lot of time on, on Twitter and that's really, I mean, that that's how I see a lot of connections being made just in, in the web three space in general. So catch me out there, Juan, I'm sure I'll see you, you know, tomorrow morning or something but see me yeah yeah dope 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 man well we appreciate the time it's been plenty of gems anybody who's listening watching make sure you hit that button so you can come back next time subscribe like it rate review leave a comment and um i guess we'll catch y'all next time let's go peace